we're having a proper open this time. Are we really? Yeah. Well, well I couldn't surprise you with it. I said, let's just start. And then <laughs> let's be started. Uh, welcome to the Nothing of Value podcast. I am uh, I'm Jeff, and I'm joined by... Uh, the, the second, second podcaster, podcast. which is Greg, me. And the f- Doug's been relegated to third. <laughs> no, you're, you're a third I of, took two. Third of five. Save, saving best for last, I get it. Wait, which one? I'm Mike three, but I'm podcaster two. We have this all messed up. Yeah. Well, you know what? This is just how our shit goes, Greg. Yeah. Just how our shit okay. goes. Okay. But that's what we are, and we're here to bring all sorts of geek and uh, other uh, nerdy and other pejorative news to you. <laughs> pejorative words for for nerds. Okay, you? then. <laughs> You'll get that sentence yeah, out someday. exactly. Uh, okay, we got lots to talk about today. We'll give you a r- quick rundown. We're going to talk about the James Gunn controversy, new developments in that. We're going to talk about Patrick Stewart dropping a bombshell of good news at uh, Star Trek Las Vegas. We're talking about Bethesda and Steam and all that business. Mm-hmm. No Man's Sky update, interesting, and some other tidbits along the way. So stay tuned for an interesting show, what should be an interesting show, hopefully. Probably. Let's lead off the show with the most controversial thing that will probably cause the most people to click the off uh, the stop button and stop listening to really? us. Really? You're going to go that way? Yeah. Like, you're not yeah. going to lead yeah. them into nice things? Yeah, no, we don't need like, to talk bullshit. about Bethesda. Yeah. You know, let them have a few minutes, yuck their yums, and then go into the terrible if, stuff for the like, get so past time for the, dinner. If we get past the terrible stuff and they're still listening, then we can get into the good stuff of yeah. like Patrick Stewart, No Man's And they, they right. earned it. So all right, fine. This is the tr- so essentially you're treating it like the treasure trove of our yeah. news. So let's like try to click ahead, you know. Let's mm-hmm. uh, let's go with the okay. Let's give everybody a rundown. So if you haven't been following along, basically this is and if you've been following along on social media, this is how it looks. So James Gunn is essentially a child rapist. That's how it looks when you're looking at it from social media. You see all this outrage. It's like, oh my god, James Gunn fucked a kid, and then Disney's like, well, we depend upon children for our main source of revenue. So obviously we can't allow James Gunn to continue as a director for one of our most popular franchises. If he diddles kids. And then he was all like, yeah, I diddled kids. That was in the past. So please forgive me. And so on and so on. What actually has happened is James Gunn made some, some really innocuous offensive jokes way back when, back when it was cool. Way back in 2008. So literally a decade from, yeah, from, but a, yeah, decade a, decade, yeah, a decade ago. Yeah, a decade ago. Till 2011. Like, he it's was a three year spot. Very like. clearly joking. And everyone's acting as if he's, or a, a select few people were acting as if he's the next Hitler. Apparently, there was an alt right sort of like hit job on him where they exposed it, got him fired. And uh, but now, the latest development is that Marvel's right. pushing to have Disney rehire him. Because yeah. the. the it turns out this is the Ed's Aziz and sorry moment of this whole controversy where everyone's like, yeah, me too. That that was rape and that's rape and you get a rape and you get a rape. Well, yeah, because they're... But now they're like, whoa, the Aziz and sorry story wasn't really a rape. It was kind of just like bad sex on a bad date. And that's this moment. It's just like, well, James Gunn didn't really do anything all that bad. Zoe Saldana, Chris Pratt, the whole crew is just like, hire him back or we're not going to be happy. Yeah, Batista's outright said that if they don't hire James Gunn back. Yeah. He'll quit. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, which I didn't think his career was actually that great to be able to threaten like that. Like if Chris Pratt dropped that, you know what? Disney would actually have to think about it. But yeah. like yeah. Batista doing it, oh. Ooh. Well, I mean, the trouble is right now they've sort of put Guardians of the Galaxy and they put the five year plan that they're all going to be there, right? So, yeah. like that's like saying Zoe Saldana if she pulled that, Ugh. but it's not true, right? Yeah. They sort of put themselves as iconic to that necessity. Yeah. So, I don't know. You know I, it's just it's just the positioning that they, they did with him. They put him in this, like, Harvey Weinstein category. Yeah. But for doing... Like, that's what was exactly the, it. What was the Giving Tree tweet? Uh, Can you... The Give Giving Tree tweet. <laughs> Doug, pull it up. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> to paraphrase... I think it was. Uh, I would. I would. I would get. If, a, if I could a, remake. If I could remake the Giving Tree, it would be the same, except at the end, the kid gets a blowjob. Yeah, exactly. From the tree, From like the, the tree. tree would grow <laughs> so, back, and yeah. the tree would give the kid a blowjob. That's pretty much it. It's. I'm doing a big Hollywood film adaption of the Giving Tree with a happy ending. The tree grows back and gives the kid a blowjob. Like it's. Yes. Right, because the Giving Tree ends very sadly. Oh, absolutely. Like, 
It's a very sad book. It has a sad ending. And yeah, no one wants and then he endings. just wants that's see that's kind of like a joke because it yeah. finishes with a happy ending in the literal sense. Exactly. And and then I he made it. it about the metaphorical. I mean, yeah, it's like Charlotte's Web. You know how many holes she, can she stuff with those eight legs? You know I, mean, what I mean, like imagine that at the end of Charlotte's Web. It's like she dies and then comes back to life and suddenly is multiple penetrating a young boy. Wow, yeah, that's, Jeff, that's that's like a, a way disturbed. Over <laughs> I think that's an anime. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure Japanese. the Japanese have already done that. <laughs> but I mean, like, if somebody goes back on Jeff's old tweets, like they have to go back. Oh yeah, super years. I ago. have deleted some. Oh, I don't doubt it. To be honest, some I of have. them are pretty. Like when you look at them, super race. Yeah, yeah. And some of them, I think I may have commented like, Jeff, you got a little far this one. Yeah. No, but you used to post that stuff on like Facebook oh, and yeah, Twitter and stuff yeah. just to garner, like just as like a litmus to find out if, if other people found it funny or not. That's right. Uh, no, absolutely. It's just for, but I'm just, just saying, test material. Like, in, How in far case, can you push it? In this case, and I'm going to play devil's advocate because somebody's got to defend Disney's choices on this. They don't know what his intentions are three years after the fact. Yeah. Right? Like... We don't know. We, ha- uh, you, I, Greg, we all assume it's all funny yucks. Hooray! He was making jokes. <laughs> funny. I was so confused when Doug said "you, I, Greg" because he was pointing to different people as he was saying "you, I, Greg." Yeah, well, the magic of the podcast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they don't hear. I can confuse the fuck out of Greg. Great news. <laughs> He's laughing at the podcast. It's you, I, uh, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> so let me say this. Not, not that. You know, for me, I was doing stand-up. Yeah. I was writing material. I needed to find out wh- how exactly how far I could push the envelope and still get laughs. That was the whole goal. Yeah. And uh, so, really, I shouldn't have to delete anything. I mean, if anybody ever asked, it's like, I was a comedian. And I was just making jokes. Um, I was probably still getting shit. But, anyway. Um, he's not a comedian, but he is has a reputation for being a very comedic fellow and he makes comedic movies and so i don't th- i think he's exempt i think comedy is the last bastion of free speech but it's also one of those things well first off yes i agree with that because in a lot of cases when you watch even those like netflix series like dave Chappelle is somewhat offense he's like oh. racist oh I yeah. Mean, yeah like i mean the- but you can get away with that because you're a comedian and you should be offensive to a certain uh, degree Again, where, where I was going with the the James Gunn thing is that he did all these tweets, and then like five, six years passed, and then he comes out with Guardians One. Everyone loves him, and then he comes out with Guardians Two. People love him, and then all of a sudden it's like, wait a second, he made a bad joke back in two thousand and eight. You're fired. Yeah. Like, well, again, come on. Come, ugh, the the really? trouble is, like, again, we're talking about Disney. And the fact that they've already been gun shy once. Yeah. Right? Like, they got and kicked in the dick once. From gun? No. I mean, like gun we, shy, I thought you were saying no, no, like no. that was a. Wow, colorful, that was unintended. I thought that was a colorful. Uh, no. I, I mean, we just had Roseanne, was a thing. Right? Like, I yeah. didn't want to bring it up, but. <laughs> We just had we Roseanne. Just I didn't want to, br- I didn't bring, it want to bring it up. No, you can bring it up. I'm just saying <laughs> we're not going to talk about it in length. We're already no, done. We already done that. But that's we've already point, penetrated right? her in every hole. Every Sorry, I'm, der- I'm in a tentacle mood today. Nice <laughs> tentacle <laughs> spider leg mood. Roseanne penetrated in every hole. But like, they just went through that and the huge backlash that came from one single tweet. Granted, that person has a history of having very off. Color? color jokes yes. yes so i mean the trouble is you can't you can't let it slide too far right once you've been held feet to the fire you kind of have to hold everybody on that same board oh no, it's true so when these come up Disney doesn't have a choice right i yeah, mean it's very true i mean by the way now that he mentions off-color jokes i think that expression in itself is very racist <laughs> off-color jokes Okay. Well, like, even people that if are... If white is the color. Even I didn't say what the color was. Color. I didn't say what the color was. could be off even, green. Even if people are colorblind, there's still, still two colors. colors. <laughs> That's right. True. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't have much else to say about it aside from I that. Mean, I, just, I just think it's a, a witch hunt at this point. Like, it he's is. He's already yeah. done great things. He's clearly not done those kinds of tweets 
for a significant amount of time. Someone dug so deep into his past yeah. just to find something. Yeah. You know what? what? Like, a Donald Trump has oh. has slept with porn stars, wants to create a space force, yeah. and for some reason, a president that has done both or is doing both of those things, I think I would get behind. But I don't. <laughs> you know? But I don't. <laughs> <laughs> very true like a, really a president that can sleep with porn stars and start a space force like hey, fuck I mean he yeah. is he would have my vote if he weren't Donald Trump and yeah. an idiot but like and that's and the thing is that if you dig far enough back you can find anything about oh I'm someone. sure oh yeah Donald Trump I mean he was before he was president he was talking about grabbing pussies and afterwards he's being he's paying he's, off porn stars to, yeah to, you know hush money so yeah like honestly I think I think the problem is this: is that the entire left half of that argument, they're very self-critical sure. and very quick to act because it's they're the ones that are held to a higher moral standard, and it's by themselves. They, and they're they're yes. just trying to maintain image. Yeah, yeah. And they're they're it's very, and very importantly so. It's their it's their bread and butter. So yeah. Disney has to act, as were Fox News. Doesn't no, they did. I mean, it took, but it took many years for them to kick Roger Ailes out and to kick Bill O'Reilly out. But it had been going on forever. Yeah. So they they were willing to sweep everything under the rug, no matter how many people said what. And it wasn't until it blew up that. But the unfortunate part in the media is that's always the way it's been. Yeah. I mean, look at BBC. BBC was terrible for that. Were they? This is news to me. Is Doug breaking news? No, 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 no. We need like that music, that breaking news. <laughs> music. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, no. <laughs> Way back in the seventies, uh, I'm trying to remember who the uh, BBC stands for. Big black, anyway. Yeah, no. Uh, there was some major presenter. It was Prince Charles. No, he was he was like a quintessential British icon. Benny Hill, Prince Philip, Jane Edna, George Carlin. George Carlin's not British. No, I know. I was throwing out names. <laughs> I was throwing out names. <laughs> but it got the you. BBC, I thought it would like throw him off even more. <laughs> it kind of did. Um, but the BBC swept it under the rug for many years. And it was accusations of pedophilia. Yeah, it was the 1970s. Roman Polanski was raping everybody. Sure. But because the BBC was the one who basically hushed it up. AIDS came from the 70s. They sure did. Yeah. Jimmy Savile, that's who it was. <laughs> AIDS, AIDS, AIDS came on the 70s. Well, and that's Jimmy how it spread. Yeah. Basically, well, no. they, they came on a decade and then everybody got AIDS. Everybody. Got Mostly AIDS. just the gays at first. But it spread pretty quickly. Because apparently. It was like a flight attendant and a monkey. That's what. That's the. That's, hey, so I, I don't know. I, that's that the is rumor. a funny question when you think about it. Like how AIDS started. Like who was patient zero? They so said it was like a flight attendant. And a monkey? And a monkey. Having sex? I think the they I think the monkey bit the flight attendant. Oh, okay. Fair enough. That that is how a lot of diseases happen. Yeah. In fact. Have you seen Contagion? Holy shit, that movie. Yeah, that was the monkey from the show Friends. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Um, Same with Marcel. Oh, that's the one with that's Contagion is the serious one. It's oh, okay, okay. Quite as campy as Outbreak. Nate is the one that makes you feel sick when you're watching it with Kate Winslet, Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne, I think. Yeah. Morpheus? Yeah, I think he was in it. Yeah, he was one of the scientists that was in it. I'm pretty sure. But anyway. Wait, wait, wait. So his daughter now does porn, so it's likely that she has. Is it? Does he? Lawrence Fishburne? Lawrence Fishburne's daughter does porn? Yeah. I thought it was Samuel L. Jackson's daughter. No, no it's Lawrence Fishburne. I always get those guys. You always get those guys mixed up. But now they're both in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Speaking of Marvel. Oh, here wow. we go. Are we gonna move? Okay, so... <laughs> Just anyway, wow. Um, so the reason why I mentioned Marvel, again, I mean, I'm sorry for James Gunn, is that uh, I am currently doing a, a Marvel Cinematic Universe rewatch with my wife, who is not a fan. Uh, she's actually seen Black Panther and Ant-Man and the Wasp recently, so she's got a bit of a head start out of order, but Iron Man, she actually really liked. Which Iron is Man, I still think, is in my top three favorite movies. I don't think it held up too well. I, I was Granted, it was Iron the Man? first one, and they've yeah. clearly improved yeah. the formula since. Yes, but yeah. it is still pretty amazing compared it's to good. like think of the other Gen One movies in Marvel. It's, yeah, it's a little rough. 
It's Thor better than the Gen 1 movies. No. It's yeah. better than Thor 1. It's oh, better sure. than a, a Captain America 1. I don't know. Yeah. I liked Captain one America. Uh, Captain America 1 better than Iron Man 1. Uh, Captain America, I appreciate because it was the first time they really did like something in the past. And they kind of did like a period piece, it seemed. Yeah, like it, it but... felt like it did feel like a very period movie. It felt very genuine and honest in its portrayal of a lot of these things. Yeah. And it allowed the character to be where Iron Man 1 sort of was. It was the Tony Stark show. Sure, but it was yeah. very much a steamroller into make Iron Man Iron Man and make as many laughs along the way as you can. Iron Man 1 was actually surprisingly slow. Like, it just goes to show you how fast movies have gotten in terms of pace. Like, the, the speed at which Infinity War moves yeah. makes Iron Man look like a documentary. It's, like, super slow, and things don't happen for a long time. Um, and that's fine. Like, it, it was still good, but it, it, it is weird to go back and watch it now because it's different. But and that it, is Well, that is a decade of movie making yeah. and attention spans following. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mine included. So, speaking of, so Iron Man is not really the reason I bring this up. We just got over the Hulk hump, and I s- which was the second movie. Mm-hmm. And to give everybody some, some background, so the Incredible Hulk was a Universal Marvel Studios collaboration because of the rights issues involved. Right. Universal yeah. owns Hulk. Yeah. yeah. So they basically said, yes, we'll let you make a movie with, with a degree of creative control. And, uh, and yes, you can integrate it into your future plans and borrow the character and all that. But we get final cut. So I watched the Hulk movie with her. Um, and I've always defended it because I still think, well, first of all, many of the plot elements are necessary if you really want to follow along because it introduces General Ross, yeah. who is critically important to the series as it goes on. Yeah. And his and I thought his character was the strongest in that movie. And it, it continues to be a very strong sub-villain as the series goes on. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, man, oh man, did Ed Norton and Liv Tyler ever fucking phone it in. Like, yeah. their acting ruins that movie. I think it could be a fine movie if it were acted better and if the script were punched up. The sure. If were added in here and there, it would be fine. Because effectively, it follows the same formula as Iron Man 1. It's just like, hero, he's in exile. He's looking for redemption, which is how Iron Man eventually goes. When, okay. they, when they get when the board gets together and they take away his powers and all that. Um, and... Uh, you know, it's a lot of just sweaty third, third world countryness followed by redemption plot and the villain ends up being a stronger version of the hero, which is exactly yeah. what Iron Man was. It was Iron Man, Iron Monger. It was Hulk versus Abomination. Mm-hmm. So, so the formula was there. It's like clearly they had a vision. They knew what to do. It's just that the actors were terrible. Okay. Tim Roth, Tim Roth is fantastic, but as Abomination... He was just awful. But now, I mean, that's like saying Transformers would have been a great movie if they changed the script. Okay, and so I have a thing actors. about Transformers. Like, no, no, I not watched the script. The script was okay. Punched uh, it up a bit, as in like added a bit of like changed lines. Okay, so here's here's the the two points I have to make. One, I'm getting tired of fucking Transformers movies just because yeah. I watched the last night recently, the the latest Transformers movie, and I just I finally realized that every time there's a scene with Optimus Prime. He usually starts the scene by saying, I'm Optimus Prime. <laughs> like, he says it to, you know, he'll show up and there'll be a bunch of humans and he'll be like, I'm Optimus Prime. And the human's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's Optimus Prime. And then he'll like, there's a bunch of bad guys. I'm Optimus Prime. And it's like, they, sh- they should know who you are. And then he says it to the other Autobots who have been his partners for like decades, generations. Get... I'm Optimus Prime and Bumblebee's like, yeah, I kind of know. <laughs> Somebody needs to get him business cards. That's all the it Bumblebee is. Bumblebee movie looks kind of good though. I saw the trailer. Oh yeah? Okay. Yeah, I haven't okay. seen the trailer yet. Okay, so number two about the Edward Norton thing. This was back then when this is the second superhero movie. Mm-hmm. It was the shitty Hulk movies with Eric Bana. Yeah. And then they finally, like Marvel finally decided, okay, let's make a solid run at this. Yeah. And then they did the, the Hulk one. So... Yeah, you know what? Edward Norton and Liv Tyler probably just didn't really care. It was just like what the studio wanted. It was the one the studio wanted them to do. Yeah, and they did film it. It was pretty much filmed concurrently with Iron Man yeah. is the thing. So they, they, they released within two months of each other. So I don't think they gave a shit, whereas superheroes now have since picked up. Yeah. And they're actually changing the Academy Awards now to have a role 
in a popular film yeah. as a category yep. yeah, so that, that people in superhero movies can have a chance to win yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like Tom Cruise is actually probably going to get oh, it. Oh, he's going to be, uh, oh, yeah. With Mission, uh, Impossible. Mission Impossible. Which Fallout. is apparently amazing. I haven't seen I kind of want to see it, though. Yeah, I kind of just want to go and see it. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I actually enjoyed Edward. Like, granted, I haven't seen this movie in a long time. I'm going off of vague memories. But I remember liking Edward Norton for Bruce Banner, like the fit of Bruce Banner. Yeah, like, like his, more, in terms of like his demeanor, his, his his like just overall like build to yeah. like yeah no I can yeah, see yeah. that versus uh what's his name now Ruffalo yeah, yeah. Like, like Ruffalo only now is only now he, Ruffalo is actually starting to fit that mold in my mind of that's what Bruce Banner is and it's yeah. taken almost a decade but for me to come along. I to wonder that. if some of that comes from having Ed Norton first. Because we, we see an yeah. Ed Norton, we've built him as the, oh, I can see that as my Hulk. And now when you introduce Ruffalo, these two body types aren't the same. Like, they're not even remotely similar. And I think the problem with, well, Ruffalo, I, I agree with what you said. Because it does take time for you to warm up to him as the Hulk, as Bruce Banner. Um, and the reason is, is because Mark Ruffalo is a goof. And fucking Bruce Banner is a scientist. So that's, those, that's a hard set. It's like, like, really? Mark, Mark Ruffalo? Like, like the goofiest guy in Hollywood as a fucking scientist? Like, like and not just like in a mad scientist, scientist way. Like, he's, he's, he's really, and he sounds kind of slow. Like, he, you know, like, yeah. he's kind of like, just like, like, just like a little, like, yeah, you see, he's puffed once or two in his life and he's a little, little, little high. He spaces in his work just awkwardly far enough apart. Yeah. That it seems I mean, like his mind's <laughs> like a tick Just behind. awkwardly far enough. Yeah. I mean, I attribute a lot of that to him with the internal struggle of trying to suppress the Hulk. So okay, him being... Fair enough. Right? Like... <laughs> okay. I mean, okay. Ruffalo, uh, he, his character is supposed to be permanently raged so hulk is suppressed yeah whereas the norton character he just got mad and became rageful it was right? with so, the norton character it was like every time his heart rate increased yeah it would just activate yeah. Yeah. and right? by the end he learned to control it yeah but that's like essentially controlling your heart rate mm -hmm. right just put a pacemaker in you cure the hulk <laughs> yeah. very true yeah, there's a, there's a lot of plot holes in that movie. <laughs> oh. He's spending his whole life looking for a cure for the Hulk. Like, they have already got one. It's beta, beta blockers. There you Take go. Your beta blockers, you're done. <laughs> but uh, no, it's true. Um, but there's you know, a lot of other plot holes too. That movie's just riddled with them. Well, I mean, if um, we could have an entire podcast of Marvel plot. Holes, now, while while you're, while you're rewatching all of the Marvel movies, I've decided to start rewatching all of. Uh, DS9 from season one, episode one, all the way through. Have you started already, or I have. I'm on. I just finished. Season one, episode... Let that delivery, Doug. Doug, that was his best acting, Doug. We've already talked about this prior to the podcast, and he's like, "Have you started already?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's hey. trying so hard to make it seem like this is a spontaneous conversation. Hey, I well, tried. Well, yes, I have. Jesus Christ, it sounded good. <laughs> I, the yes, people on the podcast would never have known. Oh my yes, Doug. I have. I'm. Uh, I just finished episode two. Okay. Uh, in episode two, Odo uh, is solving a murder. He's getting framed by because yep. the guy cloned himself and then murdered his clone. Yep. And so yeah, that's. That was kind of that was actually a pretty unique episode yeah. when I watched it because I was like, "How the fuck is this happening?" There's a similar TNG episode where Ferengi scientist uh, discovers a way, metaphasic shielding, a way to fly ships into the sun, and then uh, is murdered. And it turns out that it's a guy who can fake his death, and then and then just reanimate himself. So everyone thought he was dead, but it turns out he was alive the whole time and he was a killer. Hmm. So. Similar, similar, similar theme. theme. But, but that being said, the show is so 90s. So 90s. Like, yeah. just the acting and stuff. And I, I don't know. Like, okay, so my other, my other thing I was telling you guys was if I were to ever go to a Star Trek convention and I had to cosplay. <laughs> yep. I know who you would be. Oh, no. Who you go would I be? So I was going to say as a joke, Major Kira. Okay. Because you kind of got the build. <laughs> Okay. Nice. Okay. Nice. <laughs> All right. Major Curie, you know what? 
episode one, like season one, which was technically like a two parter. Yeah. Which yeah. like guest starred uh, Jean Luc Picard. Yeah. But she was like pretty badass in that episode. Yeah. Granted, hella nineties, but yeah. she like reminds me of Elaine Bennis from from Seinfeld. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah I could tell. But uh, but oh, you would go as a sheer, right? I what can see that. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Now I would see it. Yeah. No, you know what? You guys Garrick? are both wrong. No, no. I mean, I, I said, saw I it. said, and it'll make perfect sense. I think Garrick is the one you would go as. But that's a lot of work. No. no. Uh, season one, episode one, beach scene extra. Oh. <laughs> beach scene extra. <laughs> Wouldn't have thought of that Wouldn't, one. Wouldn't have guessed. When, <laughs> no, but it makes perfect sense based on my acting history. There you go. <laughs> But like when when uh, Cisco is seeing like the memory of his wife based on the orb playing like his wife, there's those random people in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that dude's bathing suit is fucking on point. <laughs> that dude's bathing suit is so ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. No, I would have went with Bashir, obviously, right? I yeah. No. I, I, I honestly, I would, I'm yeah. most look like Bashir, and yeah. I most act like Bashir. Yeah. But I could see Greg wanting to do a Garrick. Like, no, no. I mean, no. I can't see him wanting to get into that much of the makeup. Is but that the Kardashian? The, yeah. I, I honestly, I'm having a hard time saying Kardashian. Kardashian. Over Kardashian. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's so hard. I know. I know. But like, one of them's clearly more fuckable. Yeah. Of course. Of course. I mean, they got they got neck handles you can hold on to for crying out loud. That's true. They, and you know what? Do they ever actually take off that chest armor? Um. Uh, I, yeah. There they are must a couple because where Garrick doesn't. Clothes. Yeah, because yeah. Garrick doesn't wear it for the most part. Nope. He. Yeah, that's right. He's a tailor. He's in. Yeah. He's in cloth. Yeah. He's not in uh, his armor. Okay. His okay. Cardassian yeah. armor. Yeah, I have a feeling <laughs> it, they just wear it kind of like how Starfleet wears their jumpsuit. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. But um, okay, so another question I've had, which I'm sure both of you can answer this, uh, in episode one, season one, um, Cisco has three pips. Yep. Picard has four. Yep. Um, Picard basically gives Cisco his orders on Deep Space Nine. Yep. Uh, I assume because yeah, higher rank. But Cisco is commander. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is that just because he is the highest ranking individual on the space station? Yeah. Therefore, so, he assumes the title of commander. Yeah. 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 So, so this is a bit of Star Trek canon trivia. trivia. Typically, Typically speaking, speaking, the the exos, the command, the commanding officer on a space station is a commander, not a captain. Captains are reserved for space vessels. First, yeah. right. Although technically, the Commanding officer of every starbase is an admiral, but they don't have any hand in day-to-day operations, so they don't sit there in a chair and tell you what on the starbase what to do. That's always relegated to a commander level person. I thought admirals had hold over a full sector. They do, and they make their offices on a starbase, on a starbase, and they are in command of the starbase. But they don't do anything on the starbase. They, they don't. It's not like they, they. And there's no observance of chain of command, from what I've read. And, and I think I. This is we're talking the 1994 Trek Encyclopedia man, Manual, which I've read back to front like five times. <laughs> but that's generally how it works. So commanders usually run space stations. Yeah. Um, now I thought DS9 was a little asterisk so, in the normal because it was only protectorate. So. There is that too. So this wasn't truly a Federation star base, more of just a Federation outpost sort of protectorate and Federation. Okay, wait. So let, like, let's say an emergency happens on a star base; it's being attacked. The admiral will, will assume command of, like, the incident. Typically, no. That's really? the thing. They're that removed. Is that they don't? They could probably. So, I, like, I understand a commander fleet, would do but it. That's about it. Like, uh, from what I understand, the, com- the, the command controls do rest with the Admiral. Like, they have the command codes. Yeah. So if the station's ever taken over, they're the ones with the lockout. But um, Well, Cisco had the command codes. Dur- well, now he, I'm well there's no way. Admiral stationed at his... Well, that's base. my point, but right? But Deep like, Space so. Nine is an out- it's considered an outpost, outpost. Yeah. right? Like, we haven't had anything. The closest we had was Wolf 359 from the, uh, TNG. And that wasn't even close enough to... Uh, yeah. So we've never really now, seen Wolf, Wolf 359 for the people who aren't crazy Trek nerds is when the Borg kidnapped Jean-Luc Picard mm-hmm. and turned him into Locutus and then because they kidnapped Jean-Luc Picard 
it therefore caused the deaths of hundreds of thousands. Millions. Well, it's because they could get inside. That they could. They had inside. all the command codes so that they could get the card in. had. Yeah. yeah. So they and could get like in through all the, the locations the and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah, that was the funny thing about episode one, season one of DS9, was. Oh, what's that? Oh, this is my phone going off. Oh, man, does, does this mean he has to buy us both a drink later? No, but the funny thing was, is like Cisco sees his dead wife, and the random ensigns just like, "We gotta go, we gotta go," pulls him off. And Cisco's like, ah! and the next scene, he's like normal again. Like he got over the death of his wife pretty fucking fast. Well, I, I don't. I, my yeah. understanding was the difference between Wolf Three Five Nine and his assumption of command was like three or four years, wasn't it? It was, but like, I mean, I'm seeing in the scene where yeah. his wife died. Then he's on the escape pod, leaving the ship. He was like normal again. But so also, he got he over was, that pretty quick. But then they like later on go into yeah. the episode about how he's never actually gotten over it. I mean, at the same time, he is the commander of... I mean, he was the captain of the vessel. Was no, he? No, no he, he was first officer. Was he only first officer? I thought yep. he was captain for some reason. Nope, J.G. Hertzler played a Vulcan that was in command of that ship, and I don't okay. think his name is ever specified. Fair enough. But as... Because, I mean, the captain was killed, wasn't he? Yes. So yeah. he is technically in command. And I'm sure you've had roles where you have to lead. You just put all of feelings aside... For the people sure, below but you, right? yeah, you get through, you get through yeah. the situation. And I'm sure and deal with the escape pod was more, I will grieve in 30 minutes when we are not about to be exploded. And we don't see the rest of that scene, right? Okay, so, so go, sorry to cut you off a bit, but going forward, Patrick Stewart in Vegas dropped that huge bomb about how he's going to start a Jean-Luc Picard series. Yeah, that's another big news. Yeah. So, huge news, actually. So It is. They, yeah, makes uh, all the rest of this news. Alex so Kurtzman right. said, I'm going to bring a friend out to make an announcement. And the friend came out, and it was Patrick Stewart. And two minutes into his speech or whatever, he said, Captain Picard is back. He said Jean Luc is back. Jean Luc, yeah, Jean Luc Picard is back. So he didn't specify captain. Yeah, what he did specify was a twenty years after Nemesis, so it's going to be Alpha timeline. It's, okay, Alpha timeline, and it's going to take place like his normal age, like it's been twenty years yeah. since. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he says this Jean Luc Picard may be very different from what you remember because his his life experiences may have changed him. It's okay. going to be very different from Star Trek, he says. Now, I'm just trying to put the pieces together with Voyager. Didn't he become Admiral by the time Janeway got back? Nope. No. Nope. Admiral Janeway was the Admiral in that equation. She became an Admiral. Oh, okay. In in Nemesis, there was Admiral Janeway. Yeah. He yeah. was still Captain of the Enterprise. Yeah. Okay. She took those promotions. Yeah. Fair enough. And, and frankly, you know, probably worthwhile to do that, being that she comes back with super massive mega Borg technology. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. I Not mean, only that, spoilers, but like, by like the way. Everything yeah. about the, the Delta Quadrant, too, and, yeah. and oh, no, no. survived for like oh, yeah. a long Oh, yeah, no. Objectively speaking, like, Jean Luc Picard has had a stellar career in Starfleet, but Janeway is like Marco Polo level fucking explorer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like really, she is. I, I think that they would probably give her every goddamn award in the book. She probably has right? every goddamn award yeah. in the book. There's just too many to bother putting down. Yeah. Right? Her and Cisco. Like you, you've seen, like, uh, oh, I'm not there yet. Not there yet. Yeah. Well, how much of DS9 in total in your life have you seen? Season one, twice, and episode one and two, three times now. Okay, so, <laughs> okay. so we won't spoil anything, but okay. I don't know if it's the same, right? Like, yes, he has done some fucking awesome things, uh, but I think he's, he's done some. I would say it's comparable. But anyway, I don't we'll think let, we'll let Greg get there. I'm not going to say anything. Okay, because like every every week when we do this, I'll tell you like where I'm at now, what's happened. Honestly, recently. I think right. we should both do the same. I mean, you've seen them endlessly. Okay, oh, I've seen them endlessly. I can remember every, every detail in every episode. Uh, but well, it's that's, been a that's while the whole point. Is both of you are just going to go nostalgia on me explaining like the simplicity of the episode and what but I thought was stupid about now, it, which is usually just like okay rhetoric. So Jeff memorized like, yeah, Greg's just. I haven't seen them in a while, so maybe I might go back and right. follow Greg. Go for it. I can. I, I'll, I'll follow along. But I, I, I don't mean, mind watching some DS9. It'll give us something in the podcast every, you know, 10 minutes, the 10 minute marker. We'll just have the DS9 update. So so let's talk more about Patrick Stewart because that's, that's the yeah, big that's news. The okay, so here, yeah. my question to you is theories right now. I want each of you to come up with a little story about what you think the series will 
Like, oh. how the seasons will go. Oh, Doug, you want to go first? Because I know what mine is. Oh, no, no, go first. Because I got to Okay, so I'm, gonna, okay. I'm just going to throw it out right now. Yeah. I think he's going to be kind of like... Well, like, in, in TNG, he was, like, lived in France and... It was all about like artifacts and you know playing the flute or was it a clarinet or something? I don't know. Uh, what did he? He played did, like a small instrument. Uh, the piccolo. Well, what? it's it, it it's unspecified what kind of instrument it is, but it's equivalent to a what looks like a piccolo or a recorder. Yeah. In oh, okay. Human terms, right? It's yeah. you know it's a little stick with a. Yeah, in it. like I thought. It, yeah, it was like a flute. I thought when I was younger, but yeah. okay. And like he was into sophistication and stuff, and I think. He's gonna go more along the lines of what? What Star Trek movie was it where he's in the Doom buggy and just like that's Nemesis. A Is that Nemesis? Yeah. I, I, he turned I into a that... fuck. Woo, Doom buggy, yeah. I think he's I gonna go more along the lines of like Trailer Park, like drinking himself all the time. Okay. Like and and for some reason, Dirty obviously, yeah. And Wolf three five nine will be like a huge part of like of why, why he's all like messed up. Yeah. Because he's. It's always going to follow him. Okay, but i got to stop you before you continue with your theory, because... What, what? So, you know at the end of All Good Things, the last episode of TNG, I believe you recall he had a disease that caused dementia. Mm-hmm. Yes, right? that's right. Yes, yes, yes. But, so, as people on Star, the Star Trek subreddit have pointed out, when the timeline is reset, Dr. Crusher says she can't detect any signs of the disease. So, presumably, that disease only existed... While that anti-time anomaly existed, so he shouldn't be sick, right? We don't that's what everyone's been saying. They've been like, "Oh, he's gonna be, he's gonna be nuts, he's gonna be insane." That's what Patrick was trying to hint at. Is that he's crazy? I don't think that's the case. So that's where you were going. I don't think he's gonna be a captain anymore. Oh no! But I think it's gonna be one of those things where, um, with I okay so. Side note, do you think beta data will be around? <laughs> beta data. <laughs> By the way, I, I don't know if I ever told you guys this, but back before Nemesis released in 2002, I had, or 2003, I had a leaked copy of the script. Really? Oh. Yeah, I did. Like three months before the movie came out. Oh. And I was like, you know what? I don't, but the hard drive that was on is long gone. I wonder if I can find it online. And I found it. Nice. I found the original leaked script of Nemesis, and I read it a bit at work today while we had some downtime. And uh, B4, which is beta data, was originally called B9, which is how I remembered this, because I was talking to somebody on Reddit about this. I was like, and he, he called the character B9 too, and I was like, is it just me, or did you have the leaked script as well? And he's like, yeah, and I did. And it was like, oh my god, revelation here. It's all coming back to me. Um, so he's called B9. There was a bunch, there was some comedic scenes that were cut that actually read really funny. Like the whole intro scene with B4 where he's like, where Data asks him, tell me where you've been. Like, how did you get here? And in the original script, it's like a montage of him going through every single step of how he got on the planet. Like, well, first I found these people called the pack leads, and then they put me in something called a garbage chute. <laughs> and then, like it was, it was really funny reading so it. I was like, why did they cut that? It's brilliant. It was before its time, man. It was before its time. So anyway, okay. So beta data. I don't think they're gonna do the Brent no. Spiner thing. I don't think they can. But they're gonna they talk could. about it because, like, it was still part of Jean Luc. Yep. At the end of Nemesis. Yeah. Um. They're probably going to have, like, random jump-ins from Laverne. Laverne? LeVard. LeVard. From Laverne. Surely you'll be there, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. LeVard. Part of uh, me hopes this is going to be very Citizen Kane-y, where he is sort of recounting his life, and we get visages of him getting up to the captaincy. No, I think it'll be visages of the 20 years from and the Nemesis. Yeah. Maybe. It if might anything. be. But I'd like to, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing his early days as well. Okay, so hold on, hold on. So let Greg finish his vision. Sorry. That, well, basically, that was, that was it. Like, so he's just going to be can, old and, and battered and drunk. And, like, and they're going to go to him and they're going to keep trying to pull, like, certain things. I think there's going to be a big Borg situation going on and they're going to try to go to Picard to get the information they need. And he's going to be a little bit. Out of it and not yeah. really willing. Okay. Or just like doesn't want anything to do with it. Like, no, you're Starfleet, you've got this handled, and is just totally hands off from the Federation. Yeah, for some reason. Okay, fair enough. Doug, do you have your theory? Well, lined as I was up? saying, I would like it to be a retrospective. Like, we know Picard is 
20 years in the future. He's had 20 years of experiences and that this will just follow it through. It allows us to have an almost infinite number of episodes based on whatever you want. Like yeah. there's no, you, all you have to do is just tactilely touch pieces of history yeah. and you're cool. Well, right? do you, so, okay. So to, to just move on that, I think it's going to go along more of the storytelling, like, uh, discover, not discovery. Uh, yeah. Star Trek discovery where it's like, it's not episodic. Like the old, oh, Star Trek's were. it'll be yeah. seasonized. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why I was saying, I kind of hope it's citizen Kaney and the fact that it allows it to jump around, but you can see the thread that follows all those pieces together. But it, it'll be like there'll be that season long story arc. Yeah, exactly. Versus the right? episodic nature old yeah. Star Trek's used to follow. Yeah, it's not and, this episode is just contained in an hour. There'll be a you know, a month long arc, a five episode arc or whatever. Okay. But it doesn't have to be eighteen episodes. But I think long. they have to do that now just because that's the way storytelling in T V works now. Mm. They have but to do a season long yeah. arc as Again, opposed to binge watching. Hold on. Yeah. That's exactly why. I was about to say, you're assuming that this is all gonna be released online, immediate binge. No, no, not necessarily. it could be set up ep- like it's gonna be released episodic, but it the story arc is gonna be all season long. Versus Does it have to be well, he's right. The the formula has changed. Like even 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 scripted television, like cable television and all that, that doesn't stream, is like that now. Because it has to be. Like Gotham and fucking uh, all but, that. Like they, they have to be. It's no, no. Because everybody's used to it. Okay, but my point is, we weren't used to it five years ago. Somebody changed the metric. I think Lost changed the metric. Sure. And I'm not arguing that. But my point is, just because we changed the metric once doesn't mean we can't, we can't change the metric again. But the again. reason it exists like that is because people binge watch. And they know this. It's because of TV. It started with TV, uh, DVR, really. And then the, the internet sort of propagated it even further. And it, now it's so pervasive. Like, you can't, you can't go back to laugh track sitcoms that have isolated oh. plot lines every week. No, no. It's and I'm not saying I think the isolated. last one to do that was uh, How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. Yeah. Even Big Bang Theory has continuing overarching plots now. Oh, absolutely. As opposed to being just like, and that's, he pines for Penny, but other things happen. Now but my point like, is, they have a primary plot that is seasons or multiple seasons long. I get that. But then they have subplots within that go three episodes deep or seven episodes deep. And that's what I'm thinking is more what's going to happen. We're going to have the seven episode plot where, you know, we're talking about Picard's, let's say his days in the academy. Yeah. Right. And then there's a seven episode grouping where he's, you know, in flight school and a three episode grouping where. Okay. So you're really sticking with this retrospective thing. I I think it allows them way more uh, ability to use the Picard we know. Versus try to create something. Because if he is 20 years in the future, this makes him basically 70 years old or 60 something at least. Makes him his regular age. Oh, absolutely. But my point is, by that point, most captains aren't captains anymore. Or if they are captains, you kind of go, oh, why are you still a captain? What happened? Well... So here's here's what I think. Okay, I have a very definite vision of I think what, what I think is going to happen. Now, first of all, we got to talk about the reason why this is happening. Now, the okay. reason I think that Kurtzman, who had no incentive to do this, because he had basically a blank slate from Paramount, who said, it, "You know, Discovery did really well. Do what you want." He had no reason to go back to revisit old content. And he had no reason, no incentive to dig up Patrick Stewart, who is a very high-paid person. Like, he's not going to work for Chump Change. In fact, he's an executive producer on the show. Yes. So he didn't come cheap. No. So the only reason that he would do that is if he had a very clear vision of where he wanted to go with things. And he thought it would be, it would would translate well on, on the small screen. And the reason I think that is, is because he read the comic that exists between the um the reboot timeline and the prime timeline i don't know if you guys have ever heard of it the reboot timeline is the chris pine right uh, okay yes. that's called the the, oh. the search of the k yeah kelvin, kelvin timeline thank you kelvin timeline yeah. yeah so now the comic that bridges the two is basically how it, the whole story is 
Picard is tasked with the uh, Romulan task. He's, he's trying to save Romulus, basically. Um, and they figure that they can do this by injecting that red matter into the star and oh, yeah, uh, stabilizing okay. it and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and that's that plot, that was the thing. That happened in the first reboot movie. That's, yeah. that's what happened. But, uh, and it was Spock at the helm of the ship that was supposed to help save the Romulan homeworld. Well, in the comic book, they fleshed it out a lot more. It's a lot of Picard getting involved, digging up Spock out of the dissident movement. Um, they see this as an opportunity for them to sort of bring Romulus um, out from the shadows and integrate them into Starfleet even, you know, into the Federation. And there's a bunch of shit that goes on. Uh, but the, I think after years and years of fucking fan pressure mm -hmm. to continue the prime timeline he saw this written material and some of the novels as well. He said, we have a lot here we can work with and we can work with it cheaply so we can spend money on things like this and that we can, we don't have to come up with original stories. I think he's going to build on what already exists and bring it to the small screen. So we can bring, bring we can, we will have the resources to bring back the major players um, and not have to spend a ton of money on a, on a writing room with eight guys. Right. Okay. So, that's where I think they're gonna go. So question. my oh, next, sorry. my next question is, what kind? Like, obviously, it's not just going to be Patrick Stewart, no, doing this whole show. So, what kind of supporting cast do you think? Okay, so that, would so Beta Data? I think if they have enough money for stuff like CGI now, then they can then bring they back. can bring back Beta Data. Yeah. But they can't which, do Brent Spiner. No, as he's too old. But I think they could bring back Brent Spiner if they bring him back as soon, soon. Yeah. There's a whole fan theory about him not being dead. But anyway, so but to continue with the thought. So that's where it starts. It starts with the whole sequence of Red Matter. Romulus is destroyed. And I think Picard leaves Starfleet because he fucks it up. I think that will be revealed. Are you saying that he fucks it up or he, he believes fucks he up. fucks it up? Or he believes he fucked it up. So, um, and it causes the... That, then that causes the destruction of Romulus. And it starts there. That's just the beginning with the catalyst. And I think that... Um, you, you compound that with Wolf 359. Yeah. Dude's, yeah. dude's He's cause, just fucking baddie. <laughs> yeah, like, dude's caused like, the death of a populated planet. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. the death of millions of people due to Actually, the it's like multiple billions. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole civilization, a whole yeah. star empire. Um, it crashes around them. So I think I think he fucks it up, leaves Starfleet, and, uh, and then, but yeah, but I think you're then right. Then comes about, the trailer park, the trailer park drunkard. Oh yeah, you become Mr. Leahy basically. It's <laughs> oh juicy. <laughs> always listen to the liquor, Randy. Just, <laughs> sorry. Mr. Leahy. Okay, I was gonna make a trailer park boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but that's how it begins, and then it transitions into I think it'll be a young cast. I don't think they're gonna they're gonna, they're gonna dig up some of the originals. They have to. They're gonna bring up. They're going to dig up the, uh, the originals to talk to Picard. Yeah. So I have it on good authority. At Star Trek Las Vegas, apparently, he, um, Jonathan Frakes let it slip. Yeah? That... Riker's going to come back, obviously. But, yeah, well, but what he said was, what he said was, um, Alex Kurtzman told me to get into game shape. Because <laughs> he's go. still fat now. He's like, apparently Alex Kurtzman, Kurtzman just looked at him at the convention and was just like... All right, Frakes, get into game shape. So, and that's sort of like a... But he's got a bad back. Game shape to him is standing up straight. <laughs> it's true. It's very, very true. So maybe. But I don't think it's going to be the entire cast coming back. But they'll, they'll probably... No, no they'll do spot. like one-offs and yeah. stuff And they'll direct. Like, like LeVar Burton and Laverne, John... Laverne, 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 Laverne Burton. <laughs> and and, uh, and you know, Jonathan Frakes and probably Spiner. The other guys who have directed episodes will probably come back and do that. They'll be involved. But I don't yeah, because Franks is definitely going to direct a couple of episodes. Yeah. Patrick Stewart will not be the lead. It's another thing that was not explicitly made clear was that he just said Picard would be back. He said nothing about Picard being the lead. Yeah. He won't be the lead. He will be a supporting character for a lead who is a young person entering Starfleet who seeks him out for a mentorship. I think that's going to be... I mean... I, that kind of plays back to what I was hoping for. Yeah, you're hoping for a retrospective of Picard's life. I don't think he's going to no, do no, that I, at all. But I think, again, mentorship, right? Like, yeah. there's going to be a lot of that 
So well, you let know, me tell you about my time at Starfleet. Well, no, no, no. Let me like, tell you about the time I got into a bar fight and got fucked up. <laughs> like, so in you other things, heart. with other things, the retrospective is more to emphasize the overall story. So in other words, you know, they're having this discussion about maybe, you know, flight school and then Picard sort of drifts in and we watch Picard through his flight school again. There is no Picard. There is no uh, Stewart in this because there's no necessity. Yeah. We're talking thirty years ago. It still emphasizes where we're going, right? And like, they get, of course, course in Nemesis fashion, fashion, they get Tom Hardy to play. Captain of Picard. course, <laughs> it could he's, totally work. He's the only one capable. That's at this right. Point. He's a little bigger now than he was back then. He was really skinny in Nemesis. He was. That was his, that was his breakthrough role, yeah. by the way. Yeah. And it didn't really break him through. Like he went away for like five years and then came back with. Uh, no, I think he did Independence. Yeah. 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 But, maybe porn yeah <laughs> but um, but I think uh, and, and and it's gonna have a very heavy focus and because this is where the fan service comes in the fans have been pushing for a show that continues the 24th century timeline for yeah, a long the, time the prime timeline like, like yeah like Enterprise fucked them on being a prequel and then the reboots fucked them on being a reboot and they just haven't had anything and there's lots of good stories to be told there they do it in Star Trek Online I go on about this all the time Star Trek Online has a great Great fucking content that you could play through that's based in that history. Well, I mean, the the amusing part is, if this is true and it's following the comics like you want, this actually bridges our TV shows yeah. to the game. Like, yeah. it actually fills in that gap. Yeah, yeah. Because we start that game, Hobus is basically blown up and shit went wrong and yeah. life moved out. Where do we think the Enterprise is right now? Because at the end of Nemesis, the Enterprise was messed up but not destroyed. Yeah, no, no, it, it was, it was in, it was in, uh, it was in dock being rebuilt. Um, so okay, so, where, so where's where Enterprise? We, All right, so I think is, is it this? Okay, so is it first Enterprise E still? Yes, still the Enterprise. Twenty e. years later, it's still E. Yeah, that's actually no, that's a no. reasonable time frame for a ship. Usually twenty five to thirty years. Old Marine. In if service. we're gonna do this, they've done this in the past. Pretty much every new thing, here's a new Enterprise. Yeah, we're getting an F. We're not getting an E. They're going to go with something yeah. new, something hot. They would start the show with the F then. Yeah. Or, like, I mean, like, it would be Picard. Like, it would be Picard, like, walking through F. Yeah, that might be it. Like, <laughs> yeah. he walks through F as sort of the last captain. Just goes, well, you know, I'm handing it off to you. Does the handshake. Maybe not so much handing it off, but, like, as as a respect. Like, Absolutely. Here's, here's, like... That's how they started Generations. It was yeah. Shatter touring C. Yeah. When it was released. So, or B. Enterprise B. Sorry. Was it B? Yeah. yeah. C was in uh, yesterday's Enterprise. It was oh, B. that's right. Yeah. Was it, wasn't B? C was... Next, next Generation was D, right? C was in the Next Gen's Gen episode Yesterday's Enterprise, Enterprise, which was about the last Enterprise prior to that. It was yeah. a single okay. off, one-off episode. Because I thought regular Star Trek had A and B in it. And then regular C. Star Trek had the one that was letterless. It was just 1701. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then the movies had the regular one plus A. Yeah. And then Generations had B that was being christened. That's how the movie opened. Right. That was okay. the cold open of the movie. It was him, Chekhov, Scotty, because the other actors didn't like the script, uh, christening that shit. Okay. So, yeah. All the Enterprises are accounted for, let it rise. Could be new Enterprise, but I, th I think they could. I think E will be in it. I think we'll learn about what happens to E. And I think what happens to E is LaForge takes over as captain. LaForge. Yeah, and that's already, that's already been, been yeah, yeah, that's been foreshadowed. He, yeah. he was a captain in Voyager. Yeah, yeah. I remember. You know that. Okay. But he's in that alternate that timeline that yeah. Henson Kip created because he's all the fucking around he did uh, in that one episode. I can't remember the name of right now uh, that you haven't seen yet, so I probably shouldn't spoil. Uh, Voyager. It's not DS9. Oh, he'll get there. But um, <laughs> no, but I've seen Voyager and oh, yeah? I'm trying to think most of the episodes of Voyager, just like not in sequential order, but they're all right. episodic, so. Yeah. Like, was this during the 7 and 9 era? or the? It's the one where he tries to get the ship back with some science and then fucks it up. And the so, ship crashes into a planet, but three of them survive and they get home. So it's the three that survive are... Sorry, the two that survive. Two. It's Kim and... Kim, Doctor, and someone else. The Doctor and Seven? No. No, it's no. not Seven. Because he uses well, Seven's implant to pass right, the time. Right, right, right. Who was it? Chakotay. Right. right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the three of them survive. So they go back to Earth. They're fine. They live their lives. But then they're like, you know, we can fix this. We're going to go back in time and fix it. 
that we're gonna we're, we're gonna science this shit up again and go rogue and they steal a ship and they do all that business. They steal the Delta Flyer, don't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then, then that's, that's from DS9, I think. No, from uh, from, Voyager. from Voyager. Oh yeah, they okay. build it in the Delta Flyer. Right, that's right. why it's called the Delta Flyer. And, and then, then um, and then, then Captain LaForge, commanding his ship, ship intercepts them yeah. in one scene. So, so I'm pretty I'm sure, sure he's the captain. captain. He would be. He would be a captain. He's well, the only real candidate. Crush is a doctor, not really her bag. Troy was kind of headed towards the commander path with that episode of TNG, nope. but she didn't really go there. Data's West. Wesley. No, Wesley only made was only in a cut uh, a, a scene they cut from Nemesis, and he was at a wedding in Starfleet uniform. It's yeah. true, but he still had like Lieutenant Junior Grade rank or some shit. Twenty years later, son, he could. No, no, totally but I'm talking about, about what happens to the E. I know. Immediately but I'm saying, after. Oh, oh, okay. So we're talking about Nemesis ends. Okay. No, I thought you Romulus meant like slows up in that brief window. So, okay, so like the career of Worf, he goes to DS9. Would Worf take command? Worf is in command of a ship. Worf would be on Klingon as the Federation ambassador to Klingon. At that okay. Point. Because that. that yeah, don't. Do you see, this is where the problem sits. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, I kind of just. Whatever. He'll forget. <laughs> He'll forget by the time you get well, to that like, season. I know that Worf goes to DS9 and takes on a role. I just assume it's like diplomat for fun times and stuff. <laughs> well, okay. I guess it's not really a spoiler. The plot kind resolution of. to DS9. Is All I know is that like, he switches. He switches uh, to red as opposed to gold. He, becomes, you know, he command red. command red. Yeah. Yeah. And he has okay. The only thing I can spoil it safe is at the very end of DS9, Worf becomes an ambassador. Like, after yeah. the show's ended. Okay. Whatever. So it's just, like, after credits. I just yeah, figure that credits. Michael Dorn does need another payout because it's been a long time since he's done anything. And he has his show that he's been pushing for the longest time, yeah. which is, you know, Captain Worf in his own series. So, maybe, but LaForge is the best it. candidate, I think. I mean, he was the more... I mean, he was most likely anyway, given the... He's American the only one that remained in Starfleet. Yeah. Really. I mean, well, I mean, okay, I guess Troy remained in Starfleet. Crush remained in Starfleet. But, but Data's dead. Data, Data. Riker's got his own ship. Riker definitely has his own ship. Yeah, it's probably. Titan. Yeah. Well, Riker was always one of those ones that, like, he should have gotten command of a ship long ago, yeah. but he just didn't want it. Yeah. yeah. So once, yeah, and then he, he, he got married and moved on in Nemesis. We know that. Yeah. So it's basically between Jordy and Worf, and like I said, Worf's gone. Yeah. So I would see Jordy as running it. Yeah. Though I would totally love to see a Will Wheaton captain, just yeah. because. With traveler abilities? Totally. Oh. Okay, so that's actually, winner, winner. that's a funny thing because I was thinking because I'm going as Beach Extra uh, from DS9. Yeah. I think you should be the traveler. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and you would Fast be Scotty. Traveler. I have all my fingers. This is going to be dangerous. No, no, no. You know what? I would be. Do I have I, to, do I have no, to no, lose I, fingers? I'm fine being the traveler. Doug would be Morn. Morn. I don't know. Who oh, that yeah. Is. He doesn't know who Morn is yet. Ah, okay. Well, another thing I almost spoiled for you there. Morn's a pivotally important character in DS9 and never shuts up. Okay. So yeah. you'll learn about that later. But well, anyway. I know is O'Brien. Does O'Brien make the full run? What do you mean the full run? Like start to finish? Start to finish DS9. Do you want me to spoil that? Yeah. Yeah, he does. Nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's, he's so far as my favorite character. I was trying to think. I was like, oh, was he great. in the last episode? He's great. And by the way, other interesting news. The comic. O'Brien at work. Okay. Chief O'Brien at work. You guys seen this comic before? No. Is it a co- it's a comedy, right? It's a comedy, yeah. yeah. It's about Chief O'Brien in the transporter bay. And it's one scene. It's <laughs> yeah. always him in the transporter bay going through different things. <laughs> yeah. In the Dude, last you remember this. Yeah. In the last episode of O'Brien at work, they introduced Captain Sisko. And that was one big plot hole in that comic, but everyone would always say, they'd be like, oh, this comic is stupid because DS9 ruins it. Like, he goes away from the transporter room, becomes a chief, chief engineer, and lives happily ever after, and gets hurt constantly. Um, so his, it, it, they flesh out his character more, is the, is, and it spoils the joke, in their opinion. But now the author is addressing it by saying, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. So anyway... <laughs> <laughs> the comic is funny too because it's just like O'Brien getting a message. He's like, "You have one message." He's like, "Oh boy!" And he listens to the message. This is Captain Benjamin Cisco, who wasn't even a captain at that point. But like, this is Captain Benjamin Cisco. I need a chief engineer. I'm aboard a station. Let me know if you're interested. Please reply within the next 48 hours. And then he's like, "Computer, when was this message sent? Three months ago? Or no, no. Sorry, no. It's it it, it goes. Um, 
Okay, <laughs> computer. A horrible joke. Computer, send a reply back immediately. And it's like, we're currently on mission for three months in a nebula. We won't be unable to fucking contact, you know, whatever. So, it, but, it, but it ends with to be continued. So there's an opening there. Yeah. Anyway, back to the important topic. Um, oh, Brian O'Mark. So, okay. All right. Other, other questions, questions related to the new Star Trek series. So, yeah. of all the old bats... Who do they bring back? We've already established, I think, LaForge is... I yeah, think LaForge Laverne is Burton's going to come back. Yeah. Why? Because Laverne I would like to see... goes to convention. And Black don't crack. Yeah. Uh, no, I'd like, see, I'd like to see... I'd like to see Michael true. Dorn come back. Young. Yeah. He's got gray hair, but that, that they can fix. Dorn's coming back. Yeah. Michael Dorn's coming back. I think Worf will be there. Uh, not Spiner, because he's just... He's yeah. pretty old for that role now. It's hard to look like an android when you're... In fact, that's what he said. The famous quote was... Data might not get older, but I do. Well, if anything, he'll do voiceover lines and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, if are they we, CGI a Data? Well, I was about to say, are we going to Colossus data? a Data in there? Like, they, some guy in just a yeah. suit, and they just they CGI They can, it? but, like, or at least they can get, like, a very close lookalike to Data. And they can yes. use Brent Spiner's voice. Yeah. Or they can even slightly change up beta data and with a new actor, new voice, and they can explain it because he's an android. Yeah. yeah. Are we going to get a new computer voice? No. no. Well, they have to. Majel Barrett is no longer dead. around. Dead, dead, dead as a doornail. But, like, no. Oh, I think we're going to get Voyager Doctor. Okay. Oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I would definitely take a Picard. Or Picard Although, it's the same again. thing, right? Like, he's a little older. Can you really well, play no, no, a thing no. that doesn't age? Actually, uh, the EMH, there was a Mark II that had a totally different build. So you just get a different actor? Yeah, just EMH Mark 17. Right, but not uh, the Doctor, just not, another EMH. Sure, but again, you can quote-unquote overlay the same protocol. Oh, I, I see. Okay. So similar structure, just different actor. Right. Uh, so who else then? Deanna Troy? She's a little, oh, she's I don't a think so. She wasn't. I Crusher mean, might. She, she looks pretty good for her age. Crusher might. But at the same time, do you think they're married? Do you think Picard and Crusher got married? Oh, I don't know about that. I think. I think. I think they might have been. But his drunken ways have separated them. <laughs> You're really on the drunker. <laughs> yeah. He's getting. I mean, he did have a winery, so. Or his yeah. brother had the winery, so he could totally go to town on some grapes. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I think they'll all make guest appearances. I don't think Brent Spiner would, will, um, unless they are willing to CGI him younger, which you is possible they'll... but expensive. Okay, or so, they give so him some here's, other role. Here's some interpersonal stuff that you guys would know. Um, is Patrick Stewart on good terms with Brent Spiner? Because I think Brent Spiner is generally one of those ones that doesn't oh. like the Star Trek. No, 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 no. no, no. They were on no, no, no. They're, they're like, it, oh my God. Have you not seen Brent Spiner's impression of Patrick Stewart? Oh, yeah. Stewart? No. Oh my, you know, it's, they're very, the whole TNG cast is renowned for being close friends. Oh, yeah. Like, okay. really, really tight. Yeah. And, okay. and it's the DS9 cast that was rumored to be fractured, but it turns out it's really just Avery Brooks who's gone crazy. Which one's Avery Brooks? He's Brooks? Cisco. Oh, okay. But the rest of them are all pretty close. Okay. More Why or less. Did he go so Although crazy. Alexander Siddig kind of, who's Bashir, okay. kind of not really. He's not really all that involved in Star Trek, but it's probably because he was married to Kira in real life and they got divorced. So, mm, okay. probably not. Now, but Terry Farrell, who's Dax, very heavily into Star Trek, really close with everybody. I follow him on Twitter, that's why I know this. Rene Aubert uh, who plays Odo, is, is tight. Quark, uh, Garrick. That one I'd like to see back. I'd love to see. Yeah. yeah. In or fact, Rom, oh, I want to get this right. Rom, Garrick, um, and. Uh, is it Ducat and uh, oh, Ducat? One, oh, hold on. The actors that played them, and there's one other. In there. Oh, Jeffrey, Goldie, Coom, Jeffrey Coombs, Coombs, who plays Brunt and Wayun, have a barbershop quartet on the side. <laughs> nice. Ducat, Ducat, I'm now calling Kim, by the way. Why? Oh, Kim Kardashian. Yeah. Ah, The head got it. Kardashian, yeah. right? Of course. Um, got it. The DS9 crew, they're pretty tight. And it's partly because. Um, the DS line crew is very big. There's a lot of side characters that have yeah. been sort of like pulled in to main. Well, you'll learn. Okay, so Janeway is definitely going to show up in this show. Uh, definitely? She's, she's I think still, so. I think she's, she's still acting. Uh, she's doing uh, Orange is the New Black. Black. 
So she'll probably reprise her role, even if it's just like on a video screen, like someone's talking to like the admiral. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Uh, even if it's something as simple as that, I'm sure Jane, like what's her name, Jane Way would yeah. would Mulgrew, do yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, Kate Mulgrew. And she um, she has reprised her role as Captain Jane Way since Voyager ended. Yeah. And since Nemesis, she did a commercial for Paramount, um, or for sorry, I think it was for it was for Netflix, in fact. She, she did a commercial for Netflix where she voiced over the Janeway character as Captain Janeway, talking about how she found her quote unquote double on planet Earth in the past in prison. Oh. In Orange is the New Black. See? That's <laughs> impressive. You should watch that commercial. It's not bad. Okay. Um, so she's clearly not, not gun shy, but. No. Really. So. I mean, I can see her coming back, but I mean. There are a few characters from Voyager I just don't need to come back. Jerry Ryan can come back. Yeah. I enjoyed Seven of Nine. I don't Nine. think she would. She's oh, married to, to uh, Brandon, Brandon Bra- No, she, in real life, she's married to Brandon Bragger? Is she? Is that right? You, I don't know. Which one of the Star Trek? She's married to one of the big producers. Oh, okay. Um, or Rick Berman? Who the fuck did she marry? Uh, she, she married one of them. I think it's Brandon Bragger that she married. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so other characters? Kim? Uh, and he's, Kim, he's already know. expressed. I'm, I'm, I'm way up on this. She, I've got about like all, about like the whole scoop. Uh, uh, Garrick Wang is his name. Yeah. Uh, he does like he does a podcast with uh, the guy who plays Nog in DS9, which you have not been introduced to yet. No, Nog is the the young kid. Oh, he, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the they come episode. in like yeah, the first episode. They're yeah. both him and Jake, and they Aaron and Eisenberg. they get the fleas and they put it on this random. Yeah. yeah. So and then they get in trouble. Yeah. So, so they both, both expressed, expressed well, well, Garrett Wang in the podcast expressed, expressed interest in coming back. back. He said he would ha- be happy to reply, reprise his role. So no, we, at least we know he's open to it. Um, I think most of them would be down. I just don't know how you necessarily work them all in. Do any of them take on a permanent role? No. Any character that's been out there so far take a permanent role in the, in the show? I don't think there's any of them that have, first of all, the clout to warrant that. Like, like is it to be popular, popular enough and, and important, important enough, enough and be a good enough actor, actor really, um, to, to warrant, warrant that, that kind of a decision, decision other than Patrick Stewart. Patrick, Patrick Stewart's the only one that's just like top of the heat. Oh, he's top tier. Yeah, yeah. like he's, he's, he's a good actor and reputable and probably be in a bunch of Hall of Fames after he's gone and whatnot. So, um, but he's the only one. Like no one else is that big. Uh, I think yes, Shatner's boss. that big, but he's fucking senile now, pretty much. So Shatner, oh, but yes. Shatner's like the only one up there in popularity. He's also, so he's so, been um, killed off in generations, so good luck with that. Actually, I think could bring him back. Actually, Nimoy was the other one, but he's dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that one. There's like those. Like I'm now. I'm just talking about top tier actors that came from Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. They're they're all good enough, and they're popular enough, and fans would. Would, uh, this is the thing. The Star Trek core fan base does not make up the majority of the viewership. So as much as Alex Kurtzman would like to just like recast fucking TNG and do it all again, it's not going to happen because it would only get like 25% of the viewership. You know, They need real young current people who watch television shows and stream them to watch this show. And uh, you're going to need new people for that. You know what I mean? The problem is they have to recapture a new generation of yeah. That's the thing. That's, that's, why, that's why I don't why think Patrick Stewart's going to be the lead. He's going to be a producer. He's going to be a supporting character. But it's, it's going to be a show with a new cast, and um, and, and it's, it's going to be in the in the prime timeline, which is what matters. So, but yeah, I think maybe Vern yeah. may be able to go full time. Yeah, maybe he'll, he'll definitely, definitely direct a whole bunch. That's what he's good at. I'm thinking like even if they do the discovery path where the captain isn't the main uh, protagonist. Yeah. Yeah, which, which well, that, that might change, change. Next, next season in Discovery because they don't they don't really have a captain anymore. No, they have, they have Captain, captain Pike. Pike's gonna. You, know, you think so? Yeah, yeah Pike's, Pike's gonna, gonna stay, stay on, on for that season. season. But as but captain, captain of the Enterprise. Enterprise. No, no, as Captain of Discovery. But he's on Enterprise right now. At the end of Discovery, they inter- they introduced the Enterprise. And right. Pike. But I think he's gonna run the season on Discovery. You think, you think so? so? In the captain's chair, yeah. What's going to happen in the Enterprise? It's 
Which, by the way, was the best 30 seconds of that show. Holy fuck, at the very end, it was just flashing the... No way! I love that shit. No, okay, you just, went, you just went all nostalgic. I know! That's why. You had, like, the tingles and, and everything. But the best part of that show was the mad twist. No, it's true. Yeah, but not of that episode. <laughs> that episode was shit. I did, I, okay, so I'm actually... The exact opposite. The second they introduced the Enterprise at the end, I was just like, oh, come on, it didn't need this. Yeah, no, it's true. It's pandering. That's all it was. And you, hook, line, and sinker, it got you right in the cheek. And it to quote a friend of mine who said, who was recently talking about Enterprise, and he said, let me tell you something. Enterprise is the biggest bit of fan service I've ever seen in my life, but let me tell you, as a fan, I've never been serviced harder in my life. <laughs> and that's how I feel about that 30 seconds. Just like, it's like Alex Kurtzman wrapping his lips around my dick and giving it all she's now, got. Captain. I haven't seen all of Enterprise, but from what I've seen, the best part of that show is the opening credits. <laughs> what, Enterprise? Been a long road. <laughs> yeah. That was, oh God. That was so good. I never felt so like... So, so proud to be human. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get I into like, that series. It shows like the Wright brothers and like the transitions of how we've like progressed in history and stuff, and you know, gone to new yep. new air like new frontiers. And then at the end, it showed the the Enterprise just like leaving Earth's atmosphere, and I was like, oh yeah. yeah. I, I have to admit, I like the first two, but the song is so terrible. <laughs> I have it on my playlist, though. Yeah. <laughs> of course you do. I couldn't get into it. I watched the first episode start to end. I watched the second episode start to end, and I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. Apparently, seasons three and four of Enterprise are really good. That's like what I've been told. Says. Like, you should have stuck it out. And I'm like, I couldn't stick out three seasons of Terrible. Okay, so you know what? You guys are like what I was with season one of DS9. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we could just do it. Yeah, no prize we watch. Anyway, we've been talking about Star Trek for a long time. I'm sure I'm, I'm surprised Greg's not crawling out of his skin here. Well, like he's Star Trek. Oh God! I actually because I actually prepped questions for us. Nice, and that there just kept you guys rolling right along. It, it's I could sure. talk about it forever. I've got yeah. so many thoughts about the new Star Trek show, but that we're, we're gonna have to save for future episodes. We're pretty much done. We're <laughs> done. We've got two other topics here. No Man's Sky had an update. We promised you'd get to that. Okay, so Greg you guys have good. been you guys have been trying to get me to play Minecraft forever. So hard. So you know what? I'm compromising with No Man's Sky. <laughs> Apparently, it's in Minecraft in space. More or less. It's Actually, a, there a is a Minecraft better, in but... Space uh, clone. I forget what it is. I'll have to find it. I just got my Elytra and rockets. I can fucking fly into space now in Minecraft. So fuck y'all. I can go wherever I want. That's fine. There's only one planet, so. That we know of. And it's flat. Flat Earthers will be happy about that. I know <laughs> for a fact that Minecraft is flat. So. <laughs> okay. It's good. Well, actually, there are three worlds. So. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, and then the last topic was about a Bethesda. Yeah, Bethesda and Steam. they're not. Re- yeah, so basically, Steam's getting cut out of the mix. Uh, Bethesda's not uh, going to release uh, 76. Fallout 76. So Steam. there are no pre orders, and there's no release on Steam. And this follows after Epic Games has decided that the only way to get Fortnite, or at least for the mobile, is through their own server. Yeah. So, so the thing is. It's a DRM platform, and it, they have a monopoly. And I think the reason why Fallout Fallout's no big deal. I think Bethesda's really? going to release Elder Scrolls Six. Yeah, but they're probably sure. gonna, they're probably going to keep it on their own server as well. No, I think I think they'll still release it through Steam. I know because it. it's a single player game. No, but their their argument was thirty percent is too much. They it sounds like they don't care about what server they put it on. They just don't want to pay thirty percent of every sale. I guess. It's the same as Epic had said, I'm not going on the Play Store because it's 30%. They're not saying it because, oh, this would be harder to get. Fuck that noise. It's specifically the money. Well, fair enough. But I think Fallout 76 is going to be an MMO, is it not? Or Basically, yeah. It's supposed to set up like an MMO. It's supposed to set up like an MMO. And I understand that. But that's what I'm saying. At this point, it just seems like Steam is losing its Steam. It is. But... Uh, it's MMO r- stands for Massive Multiplayer Online. Sorry, we yeah. should have. It's just we're not just dyslexics that are misspelling yeah. mom. Mo, 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 mo. 
I want dinner, Mo. No, this is really going to come down with... Mo. This is going to come down with the new Elder Scrolls. If Bethesda says, no, we're not going in for pre-orders, you want you come to us, then it's really going to... Then shit's going to hit the fan. So... Go ahead. No, I have nothing. Okay, so... I'm all out. Usually at this point in the podcast... And we're not doing it. Doug said he didn't want to do it. So, Doug, I'm actually... a bad day. I'm actually, like, really upset about this, because Doug sent a pretty... Um, yep. aggressive. I totally did. Like, instant message to us. Because normally I play cursing, along and I'm just like, okay. Cursing fine. and swearing and how he doesn't want to do his yep. top 10. You're right. We're, we're not doing it, it this week. very aggressive and I'm very disappointed. You can be as disappointed as you like, but my answer still remains the same. I had zero prep. Normally hey, I have some prep. Okay, if I give you one, will you do it? Uh, it's easy to I, find. Okay, sure. Let's go nuts. Uh, okay, so how about we do, uh, Ofa's top 10 videos by uh, viewer, by views. Okay. <laughs> how's he going to, how's he going to guess that though? Then you'd know. have to play. That's stupid. I'm stupid. No, no, no. I <laughs> this is over. <laughs> but it's a great way to plug your own stuff. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Subscribe to my channel, everybody. <laughs> Hold on. No, no, don't, don't do that, Doug. That's stupid. That's, I'm not. That's not going to work. But um, Shark Week just finished. Yeah, what else we got? Uh, most it? anticipated Let's movies. All right, you know what? Let's see if I can find something suitable on Box Office Mojo that we can have fun with. Okay. Then we'll go with it, and we'll, and I'm gonna stick in the Star Trek vein. What the hell? Okay. So oh, there Greg, you go. How about there? There are exactly yeah. ten Star Trek films before the reboots. So how about we do? I'm looking. I don't actually so far, know it looks all like of them. Top I've seen grossing. All of them. Well, it, we might just make it easy on Greg. I'll give a number. I'll give a movie. Tell me where it falls. Okay. How about this? If Greg gets the movie right, he goes first every time. Sure. If he gets the movie right, he gets the point. If I get the movie right, I still have to guess the dollar figure within $20 million or else I don't get the point. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so it's extremely Greg, stacked in my it's favor. It's stacked in Greg's favor. Let's yeah, see yeah. how he does. I'm waiting for the website. So this is going to be something. And we're doing Mojo. Box Office Mojo and we're doing Domestic, right? At this point, I am... <laughs> <laughs> the one I have Box to look Office at. Box Office Mojo is <laughs> conspiring against us. You can see the, the screen I've got. All right, give, <laughs> give it a refresh. We got here. <laughs> this is Great. the most we exciting podcast. Use, we have to use Box Office Mojo. Well, no, domestic it's, it's, sales... It happens to be the thing I looked at 10 minutes before starting this podcast. Let's see if I can find something else. Um, this is absolutely fantastic. With my dog barking in the your background. Your dog's going nuts over what? It's only when we start podcasting does your dog go nuts. I know. One of my two dogs. The other one's sitting here very peacefully, quietly, just enjoying the company. Which is weird. This is the dog that usually freaks out the most. Well, she just gets scared, but... Uh... Anyway... Dead silence? That's what tickety, we're going to do? Tickety, 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 yeah. Or right. I didn't even know it was a bad so, pizza until the next day. Like, at least the richest gives me the top eight. Okay. Grossing. So okay. how are we doing this again? Good enough. Good I, enough. I, good enough. I, I try he goes to... first. If he gets the movie, he gets the point. End of discussion. Right. If he doesn't get the movie, I get a chance to steal. But I have to guess the movie and the dollar figure within twenty million dollars. Okay. And you got to tell me if it's domestic or not, because I got to. Uh, I'm trying again. This is totally. I got thrown down. Yeah. Get thrown down. Okay, so here we are doing it anyway. Yeah. Doug's, Doug's top eight. Doug's top eight. Eight. Trying to figure out what it is. It's top. Uh, it's limited top. to domestic numbers. Okay. 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 All right. Just hit him up. What's actually? Eight, it right? could be. It could be Doug's top ten if Doug throws two invented ones in, and I. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> like, so I'm those. giving. I'm giving him the position. He guesses what movie it is. Yeah. And keep the right. screen minimized, as I can see the posters. Yeah, there you go. I'm, I tried to turn it as far as I could. That's fine. That's without smacking too much off your wall. Okay. All right. So with number, number eight, eight, Greg. Okay, number eight is uh, 
You can Gener- just say a number if you want. Generations. Start generations. He is right. He's right. Greg's on the board. Greg gets number one point. All right. Okay. All right. Number seven. Can Greg go for two straight? Um. What's? I think it's another TNG one. Okay. No, the one with the whales. The, the original, one with the whales. The Star Trek original one with the whales. Star Trek Four. No. Okay. That was my guess. That was filling him in. No, I know, and yeah. that's what I'm saying. No, because okay. I was letting him go through if he changes his mind. Okay. Okay, that was my guess. The yeah. whale one. The whales. Okay. So if Generations is number eight, then I would say eight. that Nemesis is number seven. Not correct. Wow. First contact. Really? I thought that was like 173 the best one. million. Okay. That's what the richest is showing me. All right. I thought enough. that was the best TNG one. It is. That's, That's a pretty, pretty good total cool. for a Star Trek movie. Yeah. But number six, on yeah. to Greg. Uh, the one with Khan. Is this, is this a plate inflation adjusted? adjusted? It sounds like it is. Uh, I don't. Let, I have to read more. No, not the one with Khan. Uh, all right. Let's see. The following eight movies are the highest grossing in Star Trek history. As the movie franchise now spans over 35 years, earlier figures will be understandably adjusted. Okay, fair enough. Okay, no problem. Okay, uh, Death of Spock. That's the Star Trek 3 he's saying. Greg gets another point. Oh my god. Boom! <laughs> Search for Spock. These are total 190 guesses. million. Okay, alright, fine. I'm down 2-0. Alright, number five. Greg? Um, Khan. He's going for three. What? Yeah. 224 million. <laughs> oh, fucking God. He's robbing me. I think I might have. At what point do I just auto win? Uh, hold on. Four. At five. four, yeah. Because yeah. you both whiffed on one. Yeah. Um, okay. So now you're, you're literally on four, which would be Greg gets immediate win if he gets this. Okay, so just based on elimination, I don't have many more to choose from Star Trek 2. That is Star Trek 2. Rathcon. Oh, okay, then. Uh, I thought that was. Uh, no, no Ra- yeah, Rathcon is two. So their list. No, go ahead. So, yeah, no, I haven't picked Con yet. Yeah, no, you did. Two. Two, two what was, was Con. with the uh, Search for Spock. That's three. That's three. And Which you I, I just got that one now. No, no you got just Con right got Con. Okay, Con. Okay. And the one before that was Search for Spock. Okay, okay. And then, uh, yeah, I guess Star Trek one. They list Into Darkness. Okay. Sorry, I know Jeff is going to complain about that, and he'd be like, this shit is the worst movie of all time. Why would well, it be no, no, here? No, but, well, I, I, now I can't... I can't okay, I guess I, guess I can. can. Well, I was supposed I'm to guess the movie, Doug. Sorry. Okay, but anyway, the dollar figure for Into Darkness. Yeah. Adjusted for inflation, which is not too much. Domestic is... Oh, I want to say... And i got to be within 20 million. Within 20 million. I'm going to say 285. 200 and say it again 85 85 yes oh if it was only 05 you would have been within oh, 20 million because 190 was the last one yeah, yeah but i think i thought it took a big jump i thought all the star trek movies were close to 300 no but so <laughs> into darkness yeah. it was 205 which, million no it was 227 isn't so if like, you said isn't you'd have been oh. reboot? okay so that's this, has this reboot is a reboot and that's yeah. why Gre- jeff would just I've been like, okay, this doesn't well, have the reboots. But anyway, let's yeah. keep going. Greg? Uh, so yeah, it doesn't have the... It, this has the reboots, and I didn't realize it. So you wouldn't have got it, because we assumed it was all the original series. Right, right. Okay. That's okay. so why I was cutting you off. So we'll, we'll treat this as a non-sequitur. Zero points, and we're removing it. Okay, so I, I auto-win at this point, because I'm just going to... No, no, we're going to do a seven. Line, like Star Trek with Pine over and over again until I auto-win. Um, yeah. No, you won't. Oh. Okay, okay what's, what's next, Doug? Let's just keep going. Number three. Star Trek 1. Not, Not the one with Pine, Pine but the Shatner one. No. No. All right, it's on you. No. Okay, okay. so, so what, what number are we at in the list? Three. This is the third most highest grossing yes. in history. Okay, if that's the case... Fuck, I should have chosen that. I know what number one is, and I know what number... I know what, I know what the top three are. Okay, do you? Yes. And this does include the reboot, so keep that in your mind. So, um, number three... Is going to be. It's it's got to be beyond. The, the third reboot movie, Star Trek Beyond. 
It does not have to be, actually. Oh. Okay. It's all about the whales, man. Oh, I thought it was number one. No. Adjusted for inflation. Is... Adjusted for inflation. It's still not number oh, one. Okay. All right, fine. Okay. Well, let me guess the whales one just for a half point. Sure. So the whales one adjusted for inflation is $250 million. Very close. 241 Okay. So no, that's I, within. Yeah, the yeah. 20. That's that's within. Right, you. But now this is ranked like that. I don't think it's fair for me to guess the totals because like I can just add a little bit on to the next one and be by right. Price is Right rules, you would have lost. Yeah, I yeah. Would have lost. Yeah. Okay. And All number, right, number, number two? two. Number two is the Chris Pine one. Which one? Number one. I don't think Beyond did that well. I think Beyond's three. First one is two, and then the Whales is one. No, the Whales is three. Whales, we just had this three. Oh, I thought you said Wales was one. No, okay. no, no. So, so if, if, the if Wales, that's the case, then... Beyond, then the original reboot. No. You've got <laughs> one of those correct. But... The original reboot's number one. The but original the... reboot is number one. Yeah. And number two is Undiscovered Country? Uh, Star Trek Six? No. Is it the second, third reboot movie then? No. Beyond? What the fuck beyond is it? Motion Picture. It. Oh, Star Trek 1, really? Star Trek 1. Wow, okay, well this is the gayest game ever. This is why I should never pick them. <laughs> hey, you see how hard it is for me? Yeah. All right. Do you want to take a, do you want to take a swing at some of the, the numbers then? Uh, Well, no, I know what they're going to be rough. Do you? Be. No, no, let's, okay. Okay, Play well, games. the motion picture does for inflation has got to be around 280. 273. Yeah, and then the reboot movie is just under 300. Do you want to take a guess as how under 300? 293. 288. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. Like, you just keep Still, adding about 10 million. 10, you're fine. Like, yeah. Yeah. You're like, not even, 20 was giving you, like, a I thought they, I thought all the reboot movies were just under 300, but I no. didn't know Into Darkness did that poorly. Well, I didn't know, I didn't know Beyond did that poorly. Beyond was shit. No, I that was really good. I liked no, it. No, it had one good scene in it, and it was the free Willy fucking yeah. Starship scene. Yeah. All right. Well,. Whatever the case is, okay. The free, show. Willy, the free Willy Starship scene is when they fire torpedoes at the space station, which are about to destroy it, and then the ship comes out of the ground and it hits the bottom of the hull. Bullshit. As if it was free Willy. Do you want to play another one? Because Box rock. Office Mojo is now working. Okay, Box Office Mojo is working. Great. We're done. We're done. We're done. Uh, that was a good podcast, guys. Yeah. And um, I will see you all next week. Yeah, Tune Greg, in. what do you got to promote? We're dropping. Uh, we got to get my channel up and running again. But um, it's Bubble Baron on Twitch. I'll be um, mixing Overwatch and No Man's it's Sky. It's worldwide. You're thinking. Oh, okay. It's worldwide. That's probably yeah. So we, remember, we were just talking about Jeff was thinking all the uh, newer movies were like in the three hundred ranges. Yeah, that's worldwide. That's global. Okay. Into Darkness, Star Trek, Star Trek Beyond, all above three hundred million. Okay. I don't know. Beyond was like. Shit, though. Well, Beyond is number three on that list. Yeah. And then it goes first contact, like, right? On top of that, like, Beyond, they're just like, oh, no, we crashed into this planet. Oh, there just happens to be a random alien woman who has an almost functioning starship. Yeah, but Gamora's on a spaceship. <laughs> anyway, my channel's Ofa. Uh, but, okay. <laughs> and Doug, you got anything to promote? No. All right, we've been talking for way too long. We're on an hour and a half here. Nice. My God. All it's right. an hour and 15 minutes all on Star Trek. Of just like Star Trek. We're sorry, guys. All right. Next week, less Star Trek. Less Star Trek next week. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye about 10. 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 Bye.